The new moon in Leo on Wednesday, August 16th, picks up right where Venus Kazemi left off. It asks us to be open to different perspectives, welcome change, and redefine our desires as it squares Uranus. We may first have to tear things down to build them back up. Let's go for a deep dive and break this transit down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. I really enjoy making content for you guys, so please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment to encourage me and to help promote my videos in front of more people on YouTube. If you'd like to work with me, you can book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I also create magical candles. In fact, right before I left for France, which is where I am right now, I created a new batch of sunlight in a jar, two magical candles. Last year I created a batch around the same time. It highlights the powerful sun and rulership in Leo, so wonderful for any artist, creator, writer, any leader or someone who's trying to become a leader, someone who's working on building their self-worth and confidence. And those candles have an added benefit of having mercury in rulership in the second house of money, so not only you can express yourself with charm, and confidence, you can also monetize your gifts in order to get the double benefit. Also, it looks like it's gonna start raining any second right now, so it's good I'm indoors. So this new moon happens at 23 degrees, 17 minutes, Leo, at 5.37 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday, August 16th. And it comes right after inspiring Venus Kazemi. In fact, Venus is still really close to the sun and the moon in Leo. And as the moon conjoins the sun, because the new moon is always the sun and moon conjunction, the moon carries over the Venusian energy to the sun. So we are going through a sense of new beginnings when it comes to our inspiration, when it comes to art, when it comes to desire, things that we like, things that we don't like. We are collectively and personally experiencing a change in those topics. Romantically, we're changing, right? We're growing. Even when it comes to self-worth and kind of self-understanding, we're experiencing major transformations. And then fresh from the Kazemi comes a new moon in Leo. Leo being the sign of confidence, the sign of bright, unending, fixed fire, asking you to figure out what is it that makes you special? What is it that burns the fire within your heart? And what is it that truly is worth pursuing? So this new moon can bring opportunities to shine, a chance to lead, a chance to get respect, to achieve some kind of recognition, some kind of success, right? Um, what's interesting is this new moon comes on the heels of the sun square Uranus. So that's another energy that the moon brings. It squares Uranus as it conjoins the sun. So the new beginnings and the opportunities to lead and opportunities to shine can come out of tumultuous shakeups and a bit unpleasant situations in your life. Some kind of realization, some kind of tough conversations, like your partner tells you that you've been spending too much money on clothes and you decide to become a clothing influencer so that you don't have to buy clothes, but you still have a lot of, a lot of clothes, right? Um, what a Libra rising example of me to give you. So Uranus and Taurus might also, it's, it's a Venus ruled sign, right? So we also have the Venusian topic of like needing to update your clothing, right? Needing to update your food protocols, needing to update your appearance or your living situation, right? Anything that gives you stability is getting redefined and getting... Even, even beliefs you thought were very kind of close and core and important to you need to be changed. Um, so expect right around the time of this new moon, expect some kind of shakeups potentially and events that maybe make you feel uncomfortable. Even the opportunity to lead, right? It can come from your boss telling you, okay, you're now 
leading this project with 10 people working under you and normally you wouldn't go for it you would need more time to prepare but now this sort of gets like thrown at you and you have to step up you have to own your knowledge um around the time of this new moon give it three days before three days after it's really best to be proactive about positive change about initiating change versus just letting things happen letting things you know befall you and this like i mentioned this new moon is happening at 23 degrees 17 minutes of leo so you will feel it especially strongly if you have planets angles like your midheaven ascendant descendant i see between 20 and 26 degrees fixed signs leo aquarius taurus and scorpio so if you have those placements let me know down below let's chat so let's do a quick run to see what kind of new beginnings can you expect with this new moon august is a busy month we started with a full moon on the first now we have a new moon on the 16th we have another full moon on the 30th it just keeps coming astrology keeps keeps going so if you are in aries rising the new moon occurs in your fifth house in a square to uranus in the second house so out of the need to innovate your finances out of a need to look at yourself more differently become more self-reliant become more independent potentially some kind of financial changes out of that comes new beginnings connected to creativity new beginnings connected to joy in general because fifth house represents pleasure and on some level you're starting to prioritize pleasure right a new moon in the fifth house could mean a new creative project it could mean a new hobby that perhaps becomes a source of income eventually it could mean a new romantic relationship or even a change connected to parenthood as in becoming a parent or maybe starting to spend more time with your children or becoming some kind of leader when it comes to children so definitely exciting opportunities to reinvent what joy is for you Aries risings if you are a Taurus rising there's a new moon in your fourth house which is the house of home and family and it happens in a square to Uranus in the first house so the square to Uranus in the first house could mean that you're going through a personal transformation you're going through a personal reevaluation. you're redefining yourself and as a result with the new moon in the fourth house your sense of comfort is changing perhaps you used to believe that in order to be comfortable you needed to live close to your family but now you realize that your comfort is actually internal and you carry it within and it doesn't matter where you are um perhaps your your changes you're going through require you to move somewhere so the new moon in the fourth house could also mean traveling it could mean becoming a leader in the home becoming taking on like a different role and becoming the mentor for your family members potentially so be ready for that and let me know how it goes in the comments below if you are a gemini rising there's a new moon in your third house squaring uranus in the 12th house so here you're going through a change and new beginnings in your communication in your business in your everyday life your everyday life is transforming as a result of taking on some kind of new healing role healing project maybe even taking on a spiritual role with the square to uranus in the 12th house bringing up the spiritual topics it can also mean that your everyday life is transforming because you are growing as a person because you are kind of owning your mistakes let's say and you're becoming more self-aware right the new beginnings in your communication can definitely come from that self deeper self-understanding and the square to uranus in the 12th house could also mean breakthroughs and therapy it could mean some of your secrets coming to light or some kind of powerful self-understanding that is bringing a change into your life but besides the mental health part like i said it could also be 
something something out of control happens in your life some kind of some kind of understanding befalls you or comes over you and you realize how you can potentially use your knowledge your gifts and maybe even your understanding of the turbulence and the lack of stability in life to be to share your message to be more influential to be more kind of helpful to the community right because leo wants to shine right so how can you shine using your difficulties as advantages instead of flaws think about that gemini rising <laughs> if you are a cancer rising there's a new moon in the second house and a square to uranus in the 11th house so the new moon in the second suggests new beginnings in money and values so you may be starting a new job you may be starting a new project with a friend potentially um maybe getting a new position at work right or getting a raise potentially the square to uranus is interesting it can either be that your values are separating from that of the group and you're becoming to be more self-content and self-reliant starting to act in that way just a sec maybe even maybe even your new beginnings somehow shake up the dynamics you have with other people maybe you choose a job with your friend's ex and that creates a rift in your relationship but you realize that this is something you want to do right now and this is an opportunity you cannot pass on so be careful be careful of like going for the money and completely sacrificing friendships but i think on some level it's it's a sense of renewed self-understanding it's a sense of renewed self-reliance and confidence that is coming with this new moon and there might also be there might also be some kind of financial developments big investments big spending so be careful that you're not just like spending money recklessly if you are a leo rising there's a new moon in your first house and a square to uranus in the 10th and some professional developments professional revelations tensions lead to personal new beginnings the new moon in the first house could be anything from changing your style and changing your wardrobe because you had a conversation with your boss and they tell you you have to dress a certain way let's say there's like a dress style at your job so you start to transform the way you present yourself to the world to a dissatisfaction with the job where you decide to quit or start a business and to redefine yourself because dear leo rising you are the star you are the shining light of the zodiac right so it's up to you to decide what makes you unique and what makes you special so look for unique opportunities to speak up stand up and become a leader and don't be afraid if they come with some kind of sacrifices or some kind of difficulties initially and let me know if this resonates in the comments below if you are a virgo rising there's a new moon in your 12th house and a square to uranus in the ninth and you are experiencing a mindset shift you are healing and growing the square to uranus in the ninth could be symbolic of some kind of change of beliefs change of ideals a sense of separating from the past and you know figuring out a new direction there might be some kind of breakups or breakthroughs or breakdowns connected to travel connected to education connected to legal matters writing and publishing maybe you break away from an old agent or you break away from an old mentor teacher and it feels dramatic and chaotic but at the same time it lets you to become more self-aware to become more confident right because the new moon in the 12th house is a quiet time it's the time to go within to meditate to journal to think about things that are not part of who you are the things that you need to let go and to become more kind of self-contained i guess that is the theme of this video because it's leo energy it's very much like we are social creatures but leo needs to shine its light its inner existing strong light so with this new moon you are perhaps understanding that despite of what you've learned to believe 
you are so much more, right? And you're capable of change, you're capable of growth, and you're capable of transformation. So this is a lovely time to plant the seeds of new beginnings, start therapy, start meditating, start taking daily walks, do something healthy that you know your Virgo energy will enjoy and something spiritual that the new moon in the 12th house will approve of. If you are a Libra rising, there's a new moon in your 11th house of community, friendship, social media, hopes, dreams, and wishes for the future. And it squares Uranus in the 8th house, calling you to either break away from the old dynamics and old relationships you have with people, or to establish new relationships and build new partnerships, right? The new moon in the 11th is about associations. It's about who do you see yourself engaging with? Who is your community, right? As a Libra rising, <laughs> you guys are my community. But who are the people you're talking to? What are the main interests you have and what kind of message are you trying to share? What are you trying to get across, right? And the square to Uranus could be a little bit frustrating, like maybe you need to break away from some unhealthy relationships, from some unhealthy habits, right? With South Node in your first house, there's going to be a lot of that over the course of the next year and a half. So be ready. But I feel like it's your opportunity to close a chapter, right? The eighth house Taurus can be very like attached to old ideals when it comes to money and values, when it comes to uh, relationships, right? So here it could be about romantic relationships. It could be about friendships. It could be about your dreams, right? You are very much called to think differently, to be more open-minded, to be more introspective and kind of curious and open to change and I think it could be a start of a new creative chapter in your life potentially a new um, collaboration right one of my Libra rising friends and followers has been doing a lot of volunteer work walking dogs and she's considering that maybe that could be part of her everyday life and that, of course, brings you or like, you know, brings her in touch with a whole new community. If you are a Scorpio rising, there's a new moon in your 10th house heralding new beginnings in your professional life. New projects, new career opportunities, new pro projects, <laughs> new double, double new projects, right? But some kind of new professional goals and things that you're getting excited about. The square to Uranus in the seventh to me feels like these projects can either disturb your relationship, maybe they're causing you to, um, to like step away from your partner and be away for part of the time, and that is affecting things at a bit unpredictable, in an up unpredictable way, right? Or they can offer unique opportunities to partner up with unique people, right? Or kind of unique partnership opportunities that are perhaps a bit unsteady for you. You are a Scorpio rising. You are very intuitive, but also very cautious, right? Because you don't want to get hurt. So here you're getting challenged to first step out of your comfort zone and second, welcome new opportunities that while uncomfortable, while unsteady can also be responsible for your growth. And this new moon is very much about what is close to your heart, what is worth pursuing professionally. And let me know how have you been doing, if you are a Scorpio rising, how this resonates in the comments below. If you are a Sag rising, there is a new moon in your ninth house and a square to Uranus in the sixth. And here you're pursuing new, you're taking new classes, you're taking new trips, you're expanding your world that maybe bringing frustration to your career, making your professional life a little bit concerning, right? Like you go on a trip and you really like it in a place you travel to and now you feel like moving over there and what's gonna happen to your job, what's gonna happen to your duties that you have at home, um, or maybe out of the shakeups connected to work, connected to health, connected to everyday life, come new beginnings in education, for example. Like I can see this with Uranus in the sixth house as something happens that is 
lightning striking <laughs> there's literally light lightning and this this new moon has a bit of an energy of like with a square to uranus lightning strikes in your life so yeah it's crazy it was so sunny out and as you probably already know i'm in france so it's like now it's pouring and it's good that i'm not outside um but yeah some kind of shakeup in health some kind of shakeup in your everyday life a problem you encounter let's say as i have a sagittarius rising client she has a son with special needs and there's a lot of problem solving she's doing with him there's a lot of kind of like how do we work in a unique way how do we get him to close the door how do we get him to use the toilet whatever it might be right um and there is an energy of like breakthroughs and new inventions and with the new moon in the ninth house there is opportunities to take those difficult things but also take those breakthroughs and start sharing them start teaching them right start kind of influencing other people and becoming a leader in that field so perhaps some of you are exploring taking new classes becoming a teacher becoming a guide a mentor or maybe just going on a trip or maybe you're writing a book let me know which one are you in the comments below if you are a capricorn rising there's a new moon in your eighth house and a square to uranus in the fifth house new moon in the eighth reads like new debts or new investments connected to a romantic relationship connected to your child connected to a creative opportunity it can also mean new partnerships right the square to uranus in the fifth house is an invitation to think about love think about children think about creative process differently and if you're open to compromise if you're open to change if you're open to doing things differently let's say if we're talking about children to um to perhaps go to a sperm donor or go to a doctor to do ivf for example so the more open you are to changing your perspective the more likely you are to find these partnerships or these relationship dynamics that are supportive of you so the new moon in the eighth could bring new opportunities to partner up with people, maybe even invest money or get some kind of payment that then allows you to take your creative project to the next level or make an investment into becoming a parent, right? I can see that as some of the possibilities here. If you are an aqua rising, there's a new moon in your seventh house of relationships and a square to Uranus in the fourth house. So the new moon in the seventh house is new beginnings in your romantic life or a new business partnership, right? The new moon in the seventh could mean that you are reconnecting with your partner, that you're moving a relationship to a different level. The square to Uranus in the, in the fourth could mean that somehow your relationship is being challenged by your living situation or it's being challenged by your parents and family that maybe does not approve of your partner um, it might also be a sign that you know maybe you're getting a mortgage and your living situation becomes like this big question that needs to be solved before you and your partner find kind of peace It might also be a sign that maybe your partner is moving temporarily for a job and now your relationship becomes long distance for a period of time. Let me know what's happening in your living situation and your relationship in the comments below if you're an aqua rising. But new moon in the seventh to me says that if you're willing to look at your home differently, if you're willing to be flexible with your living situation, even if you're willing to kind of look at your childhood and at your past traumas differently and be open to addressing them and be open to even like being open to seeing your relationship differently can transpire and turn into new beginnings in the relationship and it's pouring out so i don't know i don't know if you can hear it because i'm sitting right next to the window so let me know if you're in aqua rising what's happening in your love life um hopefully it's something exciting that's coming your way 
And if you are a Pisces rising, there's a new moon in your sixth house, the place of health, work and service and a square to Uranus in the third house. And you're being challenged to rethink your thinking and rethink your everyday life and rethink your health, right? How can you be a star in your everyday life, right? How can you be the biggest cheerleader to yourself because the square to uranus in the third house and it's interesting because my boyfriend is a pisces rising and i've been hearing him say this for like a year at this point i think is that he's trying to change the way he looks at things and like you know sometimes i do it we many of us do it right sometimes there is a tendency to catastrophize or to see one negative thing and turn it into like this defines me, this is who I am, this is what my life is like. So with Uranus in the third house, you are called to change your mindset and to change the way you see things, right? And that could be about yourself, it could be about work, it could be about your health. So it feels like a very insightful new moon. So you're asking big questions, but it also could be very practical with new beginnings in the sixth house where you choose to exercise regularly, where you choose to meditate daily, where you choose to commit to bettering yourself and perhaps even sharing something about your journey, right? Like committing, like you have in your everyday house, in the house of everyday work, you have Leo. So it's almost like some of you have the potential to be a star when it comes to helping others or when it comes to guiding others, healing others, it's the house of health. So how can you bring that energy of the transformations you're going through and also use it to help other people? So let me know how this resonates. How has your health been? How has work been? If you are a Pisces rising, are you ready for this new moon? Are you excited? I hope you are. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being with me and for bearing with me if you can hear the rain but the rain sound is a good sound but thank you for being here thank you for watching my videos i'll talk to you very soon bye